Ladies and gentlemen, it is your host, Henri Norman. It is Hope Media, the mom edition. We are back. We have another phenomenal mom, Cassandra. Yes. It is a pleasure to meet you. Same here. Pleasure to meet you as well. So welcome Thank to you. Hope Media. Thank you. And welcome to hanging out with us in our in San Now studio. I'm glad to be here. Yes. As we know, there's two million plus people locked up mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that they all have in common, regardless of where they're from or what they did or what they look like, mm -hmm. they all have a mom. Absolutely. And I just know from my own testimony in life of my mom sticking it out with me and my brother, going through it with my sisters, just the mom story. Mm -hmm. And the mom is always there. So I wanted yeah. to make it a point to share mom's version mm. and had her come share her testimony. Not about the child so much, but about mom. Right. Mm -hmm. So where were you born? Here, Atlanta, Decatur. Grady baby. Grady yes. baby. Grady baby, yes. Saying shout out to, I heard that a lot. Decatur, yeah. What, the Grady baby? Yeah. yeah. Is it like the only major hospital where I was born? It was at? then. It was like, what, maybe two? Crawford Long and Grady were like the major two. And everybody went That Grady. we could, yeah, pretty much everybody. Oh, that we could go to. Yes. So black yeah. folks, there was other hospitals we just couldn't go. I mean, that's who welcomed us. It's the most. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. felt welcome kind of sort of at Grady. Exactly. exactly. First of all, like, okay, we got one. Exactly. Hurry up. <laughs> Bring her in. Let's get her out. But my father, all his brothers and sisters were born in the house. Oh, wow. Because in the 50s, it was against the law for blacks to be born in a hospital in Virginia. In Virginia? In Virginia. Wow. I'm the first generation born in a hospital in my, in my father's family. That is amazing. And it's only because he moved to Boston. Mm. Had my grandparents stayed in Virginia, my son might have been the first generation. And he was born in 2005. Wow. That's it's history like, for you. So, how was it like for you in high school in Decatur? So, back then we had what they called uh, majority to minority program. Um, my area, Catlin Road, was, of course, predominantly black. And uh, they had a program where they took the, the, uh, us, black kids, and transferred them to a predominantly white school. So, I went to Lakeside. I was scheduled to go to McNair, which is where black everybody school. went. Um, but you had to do a special application and everything to go to Lakeside High School. So I ended up going to Lakeside High School, which was far from Decatur. <laughs> so what was it like going to school with a bunch of white kids? Um, that's what it came down to. Very different when you haven't grown up around them. So, um, but it was a great experience. I actually, I actually enjoyed it. It was amazing. Um, Playing any sports? Yeah. Well, no, not sports. I was in the band. I played drums. <laughs> I was a trumpet player. What you talking what? about? What? All right. Yeah, that was, I was a band girl. So I loved music. Music was my thing, so I played drums. My grandma had a fit because I was supposed to bring home a clarinet or a flute. That was not the case. Um, that was a girly thing to do. Yeah. But I stuck with it. So Sheila E., what are you talking right. about? Yeah, she didn't know anything about that. Oh. Are you supposed to be a dainty girl? And that was not me. Did, not, <laughs> so you was a tomboy? I was you just out tomboy. there? I was just different. Um, she really tried to make me a girly girl. Dresses all the time and... So that just was not the idea of her, me bringing a drum home. But I did. I played quads. I played snare, bells, played piano. Yeah. So, band. Yeah, band. No sports, but band. That was my hugest thing. Listen, I feel you on the band. <laughs> so, yeah. did you date people? I mean, you went to all white school. You have any, you date people I there? I did. You dated a white boy in high school? I did and decided to bring him home one time. Brought the white boy home to yes, the Yes, and my grandmother... Because my grandmother raised me. My mom passed when I was four. So my grandmother and granddad raised me. So I thought Whoa. it was, Whoa. yeah, yeah. You had grandparents Yeah. from like way back. Absolutely. You came home. And I thought it was a brilliant idea to bring brilliant home. Brilliant idea to bring a white boy, boy from home. And she had a fit. And of course, you know, they don't bite their tongue. So. You went through it. I did. And needless to say, we didn't last long. So, uh <laughs> Grandma wasn't having it. No, she was not having that. But was he a nice guy? He was. We actually, we are good friends now. He's married and everything. We, we hang out every now and again. So, yeah, it was yeah. a good experience, though. It was. It was. Got Just, it. you know. What'd you do after high school? I started, well, had my first son. After, after or during? Right after. Right after graduating, I was trying to go to mortuary science school. I wanted to be a mortician. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Be a mortician. Got pregnant. That kind of threw everything off. So, so was this a new guy? Uh, yes. <laughs> Indeed. So was. was he a good guy? He was. Actually, I have five sons. So he was my first of five sons. 
Okay, so yes. you, the guy you met, you had five kids with? Mm -hmm. Yes, they're all by one person. Oh, yeah. he's a phenomenal yeah. guy. He's just like, he boom. Very much so. Very five boys. So. He, he five boys. He's a good dude with Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> so, yeah. So, mom, dad, five kids. Yeah. Everything is going good. Yes. Yes. Then, at some point, yes. which one of your kids start drifting? So, my number two. Um, um, so, again, they grew up in a two-family household. Um, we started living together a little after my... Um, I was pregnant with my third. We started living, living together. And um, I honestly, now in hindsight, kind of saw, saw signs. But this is after the fact, of course. You don't think. Signs you know, with the kid. Sign with my number two son that is currently. What were some of the signs? Um, his behavior in, in responding to where you've been. Um, why have you been gone so long? Because we, we kind of were strict on when they came home. I was the youth leader at my church. Um, so it, that started to change. He never been disrespectful, never talked, you know, strangely to me or out of way. It was just the shifting of the time since coming in, um, hiding the book bag. I'm seeing that now, but I really didn't pay attention to that then. Um, that wasn't one of the things that I would have thought to look for. Um, you didn't know? No, totally oblivious. I'm thinking you, you have two parents in the home. That was my goal. Like, Mom, Dad, we're here. Yes, we're here. We're here. We're present. We're, we're walk. We make. You making lunch? We're legal. We go to work every day. We come home every day. What did you What did you do for work? So I work at the time. I was working at Georgia Perimeter College. And what um, did his father do? His father was in between jobs at the time, but he was, was occupation. present. Present. Um, janitorial at at Children's Healthcare. But mom and dad every day. Absolutely. Wake every up. Day. There's mom. There's dad. Literally. Literally. There's your brothers, sisters. I can't sisters, say that. Yes. There's socks. There's shoes. There's food. The lights <laughs> yes. are on. Yes, 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 all of that. All of that. So you're, you're not thinking that because we're providing a certain environment that he could go wrong. I purposely moved out of the area we grew up in and moved Lived in to, a nice neighborhood. Yes. We, we, we shipped from, like, the Ellenwood area, and we went to the area where I went to high school. So my kids end up going to where I went to school at Lakeside. Oh, you moved. You, you, I just, you yep. gentrified that neighborhood. Yes. I, we went to the north side of the cab. And, this road. Yeah. So thinking at the time. This, this would is, do it. This is it. This is a, We live out here. It's safe. It's quiet. A good school. I went to this school, and I came out cool. Exactly. So my kid's going to go here. And the oldest one did. Yeah. The oldest one did. And yeah. the second one was like, nope. Absolutely. And he's the one that I now, he's very quiet, very subtle, um, doesn't talk much. So, you know, you, it goes under the radar. Um, and 17, he decided to go and steal a car. Neighbor's car. On of top course. Of, that. of course. You generally start out stealing close to home. That, the good thing <laughs> yeah. about that is he wasn't a professional. Correct. Because he was a professional, he'd have been someplace else stealing. Correct. The fact that he sold a neighbor's car, he was a rookie. Right. This for me to you. Okay. Well, thank you, because I didn't consider that. Uh, yeah, he wasn't like into it, into it. Because I used to steal cars. Uh, and I never stole cars where I lived. You I'd go, the neighbor. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was a rookie. That's like a childhood prank. Yep. And of course. It's criminal, but. It's still a prank. For him. Yeah. So he took it, and of course, he goes and picks up a friend. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. The guy had a really nice uh, new Mustang. The guy had just bought it like two weeks prior. Fresh, new, still smelled brand new. I remember when the guy got it, he was out there polishing it and everything. Yes. So <laughs> clearly my son had a whole radar on He him. saw it too. Absolutely. Steals a car, picks up a friend. Friend and girlfriend had gotten into it. So he decides, this is the night we're going to go over there and I'm going to shoot up the girlfriend's house because she thinks she's going to deal with this other dude. So what a baseline is they went out and got in trouble. Got in trouble. In the car. In the car. They get arrested. Get arrested. Your son and his friend yes. are arrested. Yes. You get the phone call. Yes. Yes. Mom, I'm at the police station. Mm -hmm. You're like, not only did I steal the car, I just went and did some dumb stuff. Yes. Or yes. participated in whatever Absolutely. level. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Are you mortified? I am. Because uh, initially, I didn't hear about the shooting. I think I was... I won't say okay with stealing the car, but I kind of get that. You could justify it. Exactly. Um, Kid stuff. Exactly. But when I heard the dynamics of... of the second case. Yeah, that was different. Because um, I'm thinking you're going to come home. Um, so did you okay, start praying? Gonna... What happened? I think I was in initial shock. I didn't at first. I just I was in shock because, again, this was... I never had any problems out of him. So I didn't believe it, I'm going to be honest, at first. They're making it up. I didn't believe it. They're framing my kid. I did. 
The that crooked my... cops are framing my kid. We all mamas know you framing my baby. You framing uh, my kid. Exactly. And you, the other kid made him do it. Mm -hmm. It's not my kid. Complete denial. Complete denial. Yeah. I don't steal cars. His dad does steal cars. So where is he getting this from? Like, where are you getting this from? His friend made him do it. There we go. That was my thought process. Yes. As a my mother. mother. My mother had the same. She <laughs> figured, probably figured out. Yes. I was a ring. Mm -hmm. My mother didn't figure out for a while that I was a ringleader. Wow. She blamed all of my friends because wow. I looked innocent as a kid. Yeah. And I was quiet. And I was a second son. Oh. And I was irony, really, I really smooth kid. They made him do it. Mm -hmm. I should be like, okay. I never said they did or didn't. Yes. But if that got me out of trouble, that you believe somebody else made me do it, I'm like, all right, that's on you, Mom. That's what we're going to go with. We're going to go with, yeah, and okay, That cool. was my very first thought process. Of the detective got on the phone, we went down, and that's when they added that. The second this, thing. Absolutely. And that's when I started praying and was mortified. Because I'm thinking, I'm going down to pick up my son. They're going to tell me he stole the car. Okay, what do we have to pay? What do we have to do to get him out? And life is going to go back to normal. normal. Put him on punishment. Yeah, we'll go to court at some point. What was gonna be his punishment for selling a neighbor's car? Right, right. What was gonna be his punishment? Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even. I don't even think I thought that far. I just, you know, as a mother, you just want your son home first, right? So then, that you can deal with him. And you're gonna put him on punishment yeah, of some kind. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first, understand why. We had a vehicle. So where were you going that you couldn't have asked else to take you or something? Something, right? What did you say to your neighbor? Um, after he found out it was our child, because they didn't tell him initially uh, that it was our Why child. Why didn't you tell him? Well, I didn't know it was him at first. Oh. They, did, they only told me bits and pieces It was a car. They didn't say whose car, what kind of exactly. car. Exactly. And when exactly. it came out. I, my, their dad and I went to his door, and we apologized. You know, we saw when they brought the car back. Was it messed up? Uh, no, actually. Okay. It wasn't. Surprisingly. It, was just... it was, it smelled, reeked of marijuana, clearly. Um... But no, they didn't tear it up, which I was, I think two tires were messed up because they, you know, they just driving around. They're driving around doing kids stuff. Almost. Yeah. 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 So, so you get past that. Yeah. You get bigger problems now. We got bigger problems. So now. did you hire a lawyer or you go to a um, public defender? Couldn't afford one. You get past the car mm -hmm. and you had to go with a public defender. Correct. Public defender. And you go through the, what are you feeling? Your kid's in the county jail. Mm hmm Did you go visit them? I did. How was the first visit? Um, hard. Uh, that was, I had never prior to dealt with anything legal before ever. Uh, so that was very, very difficult. By that time, it was maybe two, three weeks after seeing him. Um, I just asked him, did he do it? Because I, as a mother, am still in this, you did not do this. Like, just tell me you did not do this. Like, you didn't have any part in this. Um, and you had a personal conversation, though I don't do confessions. Right. But you had a personal conversation, and you walked away with a new understanding. Yeah, of course he didn't come out and tell me he did it. Not there. Um, but as a mother, I'm, I'm seeing it. So, um, yeah. His story's yeah. not adding up to you. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I felt like a failure as a mother. Uh, so you have five. I have five sons. As a mom, especially with boys, my hugest thing in having them was the stigma of, you know, five black sons, they're going to end up dead or in jail. Which is why I moved, which is why, I'm, you know, we, we did certain things to make sure we didn't fall into that category. And here we are with my second son. Um, so um, I felt like a failure. Uh, I did everything blaming their dad. Like, you didn't talk to him enough. You didn't communicate enough. You didn't father enough. Um, I, I went through all of that, you know, inadvertently, not just wanting to blame something or someone. And starting to then learn my child had an entirely different world outside of home. Um, gang activity. From zero to six, they're yours. Literally. Yeah. From zero to six, this is my mother's quote. From zero to six, they're yours. Yeah. But once they hit school, all bets that's are right. off. Mm, that's a good way to think about it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it, we had an entirely different world that we had. No clue about. No clue about. So it started unraveling a little bit. The gang activity wasn't his first time stealing, just not a car, um, breaking into cars, just getting doing parts. Stuff. Yeah, we had no clue. But in hindsight, that started to make sense with the activity of him, what I mentioned, the behavior change. Right. So then yeah. it started connecting. So he's doing these changes. You just didn't know, you didn't know the signs. No, didn't know Feel what like, to look for. You know what, you, 
hey, we're in the right neighborhood. I got you in the right school. Me and your dad are both here. There's food on the table. You got clean clothes. So what is liking. the problem? Yes. It's called the influence of the world. Yes. Yes. And I did not know how heavy in competition we had against that. Oh, this is called phones. They have yeah. walking around baby computers. They can see the whole world. Mm -hmm. But as a parent, especially a mother, um, I consider my nurturing ability strong. Um, yeah. I, I consider my open door policy strong. I consider getting them in all kinds of activities strong. I consider us going to church and having them activities and being part of the, you know. Everything. Yeah, strong. That, that's me as a they, mom. Here comes, they have engineers mm. that sit in rooms. Absolutely. They try to, they program telephones and, act, and games to keep your kid attached to a screen. They keep them swiping and swiping and twirling, whatever they do on that damn yes. thing. They program, they have social engineers, wow. they're doctors, highly trained. The, the bells, the whistles, the tones are not accidental. They are meant wow. to keep you transformed. Mm. I'm not blaming the phone. No. But I get what then they stay on the phone. Then some kids look at positive stuff. Some kids look at negative stuff. Some kids see, uh, my son listens to a song. Mm -hmm. And it's entertainment. Mm -hmm. You're still listening to a song, and it's the way he's supposed to live. Yes. And it just... Yes. Yes. He didn't live a hard life. He, he didn't have to, you know, some people's stories, they had to help mama raise the siblings. That it, wasn't his story. He didn't have to get a job to help you pay, no, pay for food. No, no, no. So that's what baffled me. And I think that's what the struggle was with me trying to, I guess, internalize what about my parenting as a mother. He didn't go to bed hungry? Oh, no, you know. He had clean socks? He had clean socks, clean clothes, you know. I should have came with you. <laughs> exactly. Again, we were there. When they woke up, they had parents, both of their parents, when they Ate went to bed. Ate breakfast with mom and dad, Literally. tucked them in. Literally. Was the cable on all the time? Hey, that was an extra, yes. Cable yes. stayed on. Yes, yes. Activities, Everything. all that. So you think you're doing the right thing. Um, so yeah, that it, it took a while for me to actually grasp that he had this world. When they start showing me the discovery papers of some of the things he was doing, I'm like, this cannot be my son. No way, no way in the world. You're at home, at the house. Mm -hmm. He's at the county jail. Mm -hmm. You pick up the phone. Says you have a call from an institution. Mm -hmm. It's your son calling. Press five if you take the call. Mm -hmm. How's that first call? Um, silent at first. I don't think, I remember the first call. I didn't even ask how he was doing. I, honestly, um, you know, most moms, you know, how you doing, baby, or whatever. I just asked why, you know, why would you take yourself on this journey that, he was 17, and he was turning 18, so that's, I actually found out that, you know, he's going to be 18 in a few months, so we won't even bother putting him in, in the juvenile aspect. So the first phone call, he was asking why. Yeah, that was my first question, why. And what was his answer? Um, he didn't know. He didn't know. That was his, he didn't know. He didn't know. Um, but he didn't know I knew about the, the other the activity. Stuff. Right, He didn't right. know discovery hit So in desk. his mind. All you know is about the car. Yeah. So I can, you know I'm playing denial. Absolutely. You know what we call it? The What's mom that? story. So I didn't know there was a name for that, a mom story. So oh, no. We call it the mom. See, there's what we tell our friends, mm -hmm. there's what the police know mm -hmm. based on a report, mm -hmm. and there's what we tell mom. Mom, what had happened was, exactly. he told uh -oh. you like the, the scale down, I was kind of sort of their story. There you go. That's the mom story. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So, and that, that stuck for a while until I actually saw the paperwork. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, then you were like, mm -hmm. all bad. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. did he go to trial or did he plead guilty? <laughs> he eventually pled guilty. And what was the and what was the sentence agreement? Um, he did ten to five, but he ended up only doing four. So he got out in twenty twenty one. So this happened in twenty seventeen. Ironically, with his story, he got out in twenty twenty one. Prior to him getting out, something happened in the institution he was at. He got out two weeks later. He got picked up to go back because of something that happened two pri two months prior to him going in. So he got a taste of freedom, and I got a taste of him for two weeks in 2021. So he's 17, and they say 10 do 5. Yes. Were you in court the day you got sentenced? Yes. 
when the judge hit the gavel and it became official, and he was going away for what you thought was five years. Mm -hmm. Did you cry? I did. I did. I did. You feel robbed. I mean, because to me, he's just a 17-year-old. We still haven't finished helping to groom and raise him. He was a senior at the time, so he was supposed to graduate that year. So you robbed me of graduation. You robbed, I'm, I'm, I am thinking of me. Like, as a mother, you, you pour into, you give, you, you, everything, only for it to end that the system has to complete what you've started. That makes sense. Right, it does. So, um, and I, I, not knowing, haven't had any correlation or relationship to, to prison or jail, but I, the little I did know, that wasn't good. He hadn't been, to me, he hadn't been exposed to that kind of He wasn't life. ready. No, no, no. So... He, in your mind, he knew nothing. He, he didn't know about prison. He's never been. No, no, not at all. So are you worried about his safety going yes. in? Yes, yes, absolutely. And then, you know, I was on 10 when he first went. Like, I want every phone call. If he's not calling every day or every week, what's wrong? What happened? I haven't heard from you. Um, I did that for a long time until I had the burnout, you know. So he's um, call, you want him calling every day? Oh, yeah. yeah. Did he have the video visits? He did not at the time. He just um, had a phone. Yes. And then he got transferred somewhere locally where we could actually go see him. So how important was the phone when he first went in for you? Very important. You Again, he's still 17, so 17, 18. Um, so to me, uh, vitally important to know how he's doing, his well-being. You just, you, of course, at that time when I, I hadn't, I've never researched what prison and jail life. I start looking at all kinds of stuff, but you yeah, go to exactly. YouTube, you? you went to YouTube. You made it worse. I made it worse. I wanted to get a taste of what is my poor baby gonna be going through. I did. I did it. Um, you was like, whoa. Yes. Yes. You, you can't unsee when stuff. I start. No. So when I start learning what ha can happen, I was just in tears. I cried a lot. And my my at the time, my ex husband, he was just like, "What is the problem? Like, do you know they do this? Do you know this happens to you? What did you happen? learn that happens to people in prison? Um, the sexual activity, him possibly getting raped, him uh, getting beat up, dying. You know, that was my hugest thing. I'm my son is not going to return home to me. You know, I'm going to have to bury my son. Um, because he's not ready for that world. Because we haven't brought him up around. So how's he going to defend himself? We haven't brought him up around. You know, we kind of lived in the hardcore life. I was like, okay, he can, he can, he can take. He's it. ready for that. Yeah. He lived in he lived in Softville. In my mind, that's what I'm thinking. Um, so those phone calls, you need that call every I day. I need that call to know he's st just basically still alive. There are people who believe that prisoners shouldn't have tablets, shouldn't have mm -hmm. phone calls. Mm -hmm. They should just be punished, kind of sort of. What do you feel about that? The denial of access to phones to call home. You know, I'm conflicted with that. Because ironically, my son went a long time without a phone. Um, and I'm waiting for phone calls. Um, and during him, him being away, you know, um, me and their dad divorced. So funds got really low. So at, some, at one point, I was putting money on the books like that just to make sure he could make phone calls. Well, that had to end because now I have your three younger brothers by myself, I can't do that anymore. Um, and so the phone calls got few and far between because we could, I couldn't pay for phone calls. Um, they were vital to me. That's like your lifeline. That's like that umbilical cord almost um, because they're not in your reach anymore. You, even though you know where they are, um, no one's, to me in my mind, if something were, this is me doing my Google University or my YouTube University, nobody's gonna call you if something happens or if he hangs himself. So it was a multiple of things. Like, where's your mindset? You're not going to hurt or kill yourself. Or, you know, nobody's going to beat you up. A couple times on a video conference, his eye looks swollen. I'm like, did you get in a fight? He was like, no, ma, I just woke up. So I'm just on I'm just on alert, like, on everything. I'm like... He just woke up. You think he got beat up? <laughs> I did. I did. Who do you call if you think there's a problem? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I, in my mind, nobody's going to call you... It, at least immediately. And if they do, you can't just go be there as his mother. You can't go to a hospital. You can't go to the facility and, you know, hug him or, you know, give him that motherly love that you would give him if he were free. So the phone calls were vital. So he did four years. Yes. He sure. comes home. Did you pick him up? Yeah, we all are in a van. <laughs> and we all, me, his brothers, his dad at that time, his dad and I weren't together, but we, we all went as a family and picked him up.
Yeah. And how was he? Wonderful. Wonderful. He looked healthy. He looked... He survived. He survived. Physically. But I could tell mentally he... A totally different child. That's That was a thing I was fearing, you know, that um, I was cheated out of. Because I could tell the dynamics of his demeanor and his... On guard, his guarding uh, himself changed. Likely so. Right. Yeah. Um, so but up in I can't prison. change that within a couple of weeks' time when you've been there years. Um, you're safe at home. You're okay at home. He wouldn't sleep. You know, eating habits are different. So it was, it was, it was strange. It was like almost um, meeting a stranger over again and having to relearn my child. Yeah. And they came and got him again? They came and got him again two weeks later. So. And they took. They called him like, "You got to come back to us." No, they called his his probation officer. Parole officer. Parole. Yes, called and said they lost paperwork and wanted him to come there. He knew something was up. Of course, he didn't share it with me. Um, Mom version. Yes, yes. So he was like, "Mom, they want me to come back because they lost paperwork." And I was like, "Well, just go." He took my car, drove there, and his officer called me and said the marshals are going to keep him because we suspect that he was. A part of something. So. Yes. so, with that being said, here we go again. It's literally like um, someone dying, coming back to life, and you're having to bury them again. Um, but this time, I was a little more numb. Um, it didn't... It's like your second baby. You yeah. Child-proofed out the first kid. Right. Second exactly. one, we don't need a child-proofed out. Exactly. Exactly. It's like, we got this. It's autopilot. Exactly. Which is not a good thing. Kind of not good. That's your child, you know. I never thought I would be able to be almost numb to, okay, here we go again. Yeah, yeah. How long did he stay for the second time? He's still there. Yeah, he's still he's there. He's still there. Now, this sentence, he took um, um, seven, uh, 20 to 7. 20 to 7. Correct. Mm -hmm. This is for something from the jail? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel that he was home for two weeks? Oh. Now he's back for seven more. It was an amazing two weeks. Ironically, it was the week before my birthday, and I was going to wait to do a family photo shoot. And a guy woke me up and was like, you need to do it this weekend. I'm like, no, I want to wait to my birthday. It's going to be a perfect time. And I, something urged me to not wait, and I did. We did it on that Saturday. He got locked up that Monday. So had I waited another week for my birthday, no it picture. wouldn't have happened. Right. Yeah. So how much do you cherish yeah. that picture? Uh, it's um, it's saved on my phone. I look at it all the time. All five of my sons. So yeah, I think that the time he left, my youngest was young. So we really didn't have. He didn't really know him like that. Um, so it was just good to have all of them together in eyesight, where you can see them, you can, you know, be around them and be family. Um, it was devastating. You know, he's yeah. watching us. <laughs> He needs to. <laughs> so what would you want to say to him right now? Um, that there's nothing he can't do at this point in a positive way. His, the world is his oyster. Like, he can redeem himself. Um, and that I love him. Um, I love him. You don't want to trade him in? <laughs> I'll put it. I get you a perfectly good you kid that will cause you no problems and even take out the trash. <laughs> right, right. You want to trade him in? No, because the ironic thing, for me on the personal end, I never had issues out of him. He was that kid. He would take out the trash. He would do it. So it's, it's, it's weird because some people are prepared for it because they're like, oh, well, he always did this. So here we go. I'm just going to sit here and tell him what he did. Me, on the other hand, I'm like, there's, I think that's why I was in denial so bad. Like, not this kid. The quiet, under the radar, never cause any problems, kid. No, not him. Yeah, 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 not him. Um, just that I love him, that he, he's an amazing son and father. He had a daughter that was born right before he got locked up. Um, so now you're raising the kid? No, his mo her mom. Um, but I, you know, I see her all the time. Yeah, she, she's a, it, identical to him. It's, Crazy when I pick her up, her characteristics, her moves, her just everything is about him. So, yeah, yeah. So, before we close, mm -hmm. what do you want to tell? Them? What do you want to tell? There's all. The, there's a whole bunch more kids. Yeah. I got six hundred fifty thousand more kids mm -hmm. who need that mom. We all want to move in your house right now. 
<laughs> Everybody's watching this wants to come right. live with you. Right, right. So what do you say for the folks who don't have mom anymore? Wow. Or the ones that don't have moms mm -hmm. as attentive and available and open-minded as you? There's nothing like a mom's love that we, I, for most, will never stop loving and caring and being there for you. And remember the choices you make literally impact every aspect of your life. And um, if you want to make a change, you can. Um, so how do you deal with the people who expect you to be mm -hmm. in the hood, struggling on welfare? You should have you should have saw this coming since first grade. Oh, yeah. The right. school to prison pipeline. He was on that bus from early on. How do you feel being in that category even though you're not? Um, I'm going to be honest with him being there this long. I am just coming around to the not being embarrassed part about a year ago. Again, I was a youth leader at the church at the time when this happened. So here I am encouraging, helping other mothers and families and children. I didn't go to church for a little while because I was ashamed um, because we were the epitome of what a family was um, to have a mom and a dad coming to church, being involved. Um, I, I, I don't know. It pulls at your heartstrings. Um, and a mother's love is, is so very strong, and, and it's, it's hard. It's hard. And to have siblings under, so it's a trickle effect, when, good or bad. I tell them all the time, good or bad, whatever you do, it's going to affect all of us. It affects all of us. Everything you do affects all of us. And, it, and I know a lot of times in his mind, he only thinks it affects him. Um, I'll tell you this, for 14 years, my mother was embarrassed and she couldn't say my name with pride. Oh, wow. Because I was locked up mm. and not doing well. Wow. When I came home, mm. he was like, Cheryl, where's your boy at? Oh, he, he's in Mexico giving a speech today. Mm. Oh, Cheryl, where's your boy at? Mm. Oh, he's in London Business School doing a seminar today. Mm -hmm. Hey, Cheryl, where's your boy at? He's having a seminar at his office at Harvard University. Would you like to go? Right. Hey, Cheryl, where's your boy at? I'm not sure, but I can guarantee you he's someplace doing something good. Yes. For the last 24 years of her life, she knew I was someplace doing something good. Yes. So the day's going to come. It's going to come. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was hell on wheels. <laughs> and, so, and if you, I picked, you can do it. I picked, at least he got to come home for two weeks. I picked yeah. up cases inside. They didn't let me. They just added wow. it on. They wow. stuck me in solitary and just added it on. Wow. But... We hit that wall and hit that space and we finally figured it out. And this is what I tell you as a mom, as somebody who knows, mm -hmm. as bad as I can be, and as much damage as I can cause, is as good as I can be, as much impact as I can create. Yes. So yes. look at it as he went down that road. Yes. But the further he went is the further he can propel himself. And that's kind of what I tell him. What that's are you true. doing right now to prepare for when you come home? Don't wait till you get home to prepare. Yeah. Anything you want to tell the folks before we go? Oh, I, this has been amazing. Like talking about it, verbalizing it, and, and sharing it. Um, and if you're in a situation where your son or daughter, I can't imagine a daughter being away from you, it's like death. Um, but you, you find the strength in volunteering and doing for others literally helps me. Um, I stayed shelled up for about two years and just didn't. Uh, reach out, do something for someone else. Reach out to other moms or fathers. Um, people don't think fathers go through it as well, but they do. Um, yeah. So you say so you youth, you want to pray for the people before we go? <laughs> Absolutely, I Come can. On, let's go. Absolutely. Father God, in the name of Jesus, first of all, we just thank you for this opportunity. Um, Nothing happens without you involved, whatever it looks like. And we thank you for the sons and the daughters that are behind bars, Father God. We just, um, we ask for blood covering and protection over them, and specifically my son. Lord God, let nothing that they go through be in vain. Lord, thank you for this man of God who is showing his light in the midst of darkness. And we thank you for the mothers and the fathers. Continue to give them strength, courage, belief, and faith that, Whatever happens, they're, they're operating in victory. Their children are operating in victory. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Yes.
Appreciate you showing up. Absolutely. I'm glad to be here. Hope Media. It's the mom edition. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You might get yes. the mom of the year award. Hey, thank you. Listen. Thank you for the opportunity. And like you said, it's not your fault. Thank you. I need we to make decisions as young men based on our own understanding and how we see things. Absolutely. It's never based on what mom did or didn't do. Yes. When you picked your husband, yes. you picked him because you wanted him, not because your mom picked him. Yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. You picked him, right? Based <laughs> on what you thought you liked. Yes. Every boyfriend you ever had, every shirt you ever bought, you picked it out. Yeah. And you make decisions. We make decisions as young, one, young men that aren't always the best. But we're geared to make mistakes. We just shouldn't mm -hmm. make them that extreme. Absolutely. But he, he'll bounce back. I believe so. Oh, he's already bouncing. So. Thank you. <laughs> Hard to think that sometimes, but yeah. Oh, yeah. my mother, is, oh my God. She was happy when I went to prison. <laughs> she was like, I know where he is and he's safe. Yeah, yeah. She, you know she that? fed for the other prisoners. Yes, yes. My prayers have changed. It was initially, I want my son home. Lord, just bring my son, bring my baby home. I just want my, and it changed. To what? Because I know he's doing a work in him. Yeah. And I'm, I would be interfering with the work that he wants to do because I'm his mother. I would be interfering. I know I would. So while he's there, he's doing a work in him. And it's keeping me from burying him, you know. A hundred percent work for me like that. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have paid yes. to do that again. Right. But I wouldn't However. be here. But if you gave me the choice of going through that 14, mm -hmm. or just being a lawyer mm -hmm. someplace, I would choose a lawyer. Mm -hmm. But I've helped way more people on this. It's, yes. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Right. But I couldn't do the work that I do now. Yeah. Without the lessons and the experiences that I was walked through. Yeah. When I went in. I went with Amazing Grace. That was my only song I knew the name of. It was my mom's mm. favorite song. I sang it for 14 years, didn't tell anybody. Wow. I played gospel in my house every Sunday in honor of my mom. You mm. come to my house on a Sunday, there's gospel that's playing on the radio, because that's what she used to play. Wow. So we listen. We don't look like it, but we listen. That's refreshing to know. <laughs> there it is. Or just swing my mouth on a Sunday. You can listen to some <laughs> and gospel. Listen to some gospel. You listen to some gospel. You just, oh, every radio in the house is on gospel. Yeah, yeah. And then we on blast, full blast. It's That's like, good. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Hope Media. I'm your host, Andre Norman. Our guest, Cassandra. It's phenomenal having you. We will see you at the next time. Thank you. <laughs>